This is Michael Popak, and by the looks of things, it's time for Legal AF After Dark. The trial, first criminal trial of Donald Trump starts April the 15th in a Manhattan State Supreme Court courtroom in front of a 12-person jury <clears throat> presided over by Judge Juan Mershon. In the meantime, Donald Trump is doing everything he can and pulling out every monkey wrench in his bag and every bag of sand he can find to throw in the gears of justice to try to stop this train from pulling into the station to pick a jury on the 15th of April. You've got a whole bunch of things that just happened this week. Uh, Judge Mershon set a trap for Donald Trump, which he gladly stepped in with his head, in which he said, you want to you get rid of me? You want a piece of me? This is my paraphrase. Uh, file a motion. And let's see what you got to disqualify and recuse me, showing that I have a financial interest in the outcome of this case or that I'm biased. And a motion got filed, and it's all about Lauren Mershon. Who cares? I mean, I, I'm sure he cares about his daughter, but who cares from a, 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 an analysis of whether the judge is biased? And an entire expose of the fact that Lauren Mershon has a job and that she's a professional and that part of what she does involves Democratic candidates. Okay. Well, listen, if Judge Mershon was drawing a pension from the company that Lauren Mershon worked for, a political consultancy, and was still on the payroll, I would say, oh, ho, there we go. We got some bias with the judge. But the fact that he has a daughter or a wife or a grandmother uh, really doesn't matter under New York law or any state's law. And Donald Trump knows it. We break it all down on Legal AF. Take a listen. Michael Popak, let's talk about what happened in Manhattan. Let's talk about what happened in Fulton County both the criminal state court cases, Manhattan District Attorney criminal case against Donald Trump for making hush money payments and then covering it up with falsified business records as the first way Donald Trump tried to interfere with the free and fair election in 2016 by covering up bad information, two or three seconds of sex he had, which Donald Trump says is not an affair, which I agree that's probably doesn't constitute an affair. The way Stormy Daniels describes it, one of the most disgusting two to three seconds of his life, it's very small genitals, and Donald Trump wanted to uh, try to cover all of that up. Let's talk a bit about what this is about in Manhattan District Attorney's recent motion, uh, recent orders where Donald Trump filed, try to assert presidential immunity there. He did it 17 days before the trial date. Justice Mershon shot it down, said it was untimely. Um, and, and Justice Mershon, really a scathing order. Like you had all the time in the world if you wanted to bring this in good faith, but you waited until after every, you know, after every deadline expired. And now you're saying presidential immunity, in addition to the fact that it's just a bogus and frivolous invocation that you're, and, and, and Justice Mershon didn't even have to go into this because he could just reject it as untimely. Um, and he didn't want to get into the substance either because why create additional potential appellate issues if you start, you know, get, getting through the substance? I'm, I'm not even listening to this motion, but Trump's claim that he had presidential immunity for conduct that took place before he was in office, because while he was in office, he tried to cover it up by making deranged and unhinged social media posts. So that's not going to fly. Judge rejected that. In addition, Michael Popak, Donald Trump talking about unhinged messages. It's just more of the same, attacking the judge's daughter. And then when he was banned from doing that in an amended gag order, tried to post other people's articles that attack the judge's daughter. Like who attacks the judge's daughter? Judges, I mean, it's just despicable behavior. And then Donald Trump brought a motion to recuse. Break it all down, Popak. What happened in Manhattan? Yeah, we got a lot of Judge Mershon flexing his muscle appropriately and letting everybody know who's boss in that courtroom, as we expected. That's what happens when a case, the, the random wheel of assignment lands on a judge who's been a judge for 15 years, who's already tried Donald Trump type cases, including against Donald Trump's um, own companies where a jury that he, he presided over 12 zero year and a half, two years ago, found that Donald Trump's con companies committed uh, tax fraud. And same judge, same judge, same daughter, <laughs> daughter who's employed and has a professional life and First Amendment rights to do whatever the heck she wants and and be involved with politics and civics. And and as long as the, the judge is not financially benefited somehow by the daughter, like the judge doesn't work on commission. Like his daughter doesn't send him money, you know, as a percentage every time he makes a ruling against Donald Trump. I mean, that's what you would think, Donald Trump. That's what you think. What's going on with Judge Rashawn based on the filings by 
uh, Trump to try to recuse or disqualify Mershon again. This is the second time in a year with no, really no new evidence. It's just a bad faith filing as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sure Judge Mershon too by by Todd Blanche on behalf of Donald Trump to try to, again, has no, nothing to do with whether Mershon is biased or not, or is indicating that he can't properly administrate justice in that courtroom. Every, everybody who's a legitimate, reasonable court watcher, including us, knows that that's not true, that he is at the highest levels of integrity as a judge, and there's no grounds proper or otherwise to bounce him from the case. But you know, Donald Trump needs delay. If he can't get the judge bounced, then he'll argue that, why can't we just wait to see what happens with the Supreme Court on the 25th, 10 days later of April, with their oral argument about, about whether I have immunity? And the judge's response was like, first of all, why are we talking about presidential immunity? You weren't president at the time that you these uh, indicted acts were done. You were candidate Trump running against Hillary Clinton. You weren't in the White House. That's the point. The point was there, yes, to your point, I'm just Popak commentary here. There was election interference because you were trying to interfere with the voters knowing about you as a, as a sex addict or a person that had sex outside his marriage. And so you were paying off all these women. I think the side note, sidebar, I think it's ironic, although the irony I'm sure is lost on Trump and his followers, that at the exact same time that Donald Trump is having a tr the first criminal trial against him about a cover-up of him having a sex act with a, uh, a porn slash um, exotic dancer or wh whatever they call it these days, uh, he's also in the news again because he took $8 million for his Trump media company from a bank in the Dominica that makes most of its money in porn and sex worker transactions. I mean, the irony is not lost on me, but I mean, apparently this is the type of candidate people are interested in voting for. So Judge Mershon did a few things. One, he said, uh, we talked about it at the midweek, but we never, I mean, I don't get it. Porn bank, porn star. I mean, for me, it was ridiculous, but a couple of things. One, the judge was like, um, uh, we covered it midweek, but we'll just touch on it here. I got to reinforce my gag order. <laughs> You keep attacking my daughter, which is the you know the civilians in the criminal justice system. As I said, even the mafia doesn't go after the civilians; doesn't go after the family. Donald Trump would be thrown out and excommunicated from the mafia. He goes after the daughter, just like he went after the principal law clerk for Judge Angoron, just like he goes after every woman in power that's against him in one way or the other: prosecutors, attorney generals, and the like. Uh, and so he said, "All right, I didn't think I had a right. Don't attack my daughter in the order." But I'm going to write that. And then, of course, he also reminded the judge, or reminded Trump that he's the judge, that he has the power to find somebody in criminal contempt, meaning bring your toothbrush, you're going to jail, and I can fine you $5,000 a day. Try me. The try me was my part. That was my color commentary. So that gets in that gets enforced, which is another trap the judge has set for Donald Trump to have him do it again. And what Donald Trump decided to do is, well, I have a way to continue to attack the daughter. <laughs> that may be legitimate or not. I'll put it in a legal filing. And then he filed it in, as at the judge says, you want to file a motion on me? You want, you, this, this is a New Yorker. You want a piece of me? All right. It's like De Niro and Taxi Driver. You want a piece of me? File your motion. And the entire motion was just comprised of attacks on the daughter, which is exactly the thing under the gag order that he's not allowed to do. And then page after page of you and me and the rest of our audience, Ben, learning the intimate details of Lauren Mershon's professional life, like like a like a 40 page LinkedIn about every title she's had and how they make money. Now, let me make this clear. Lauren Mershon, who's an independent unit from her father. OK, she's a grown woman who has a job. Part of her job is in politics. She runs, she works for and runs or helps run a, a political marketing firm that works primarily because they make a choice like we do on the Democratic side. So all of her clients have been in the past like Kamala and the Biden campaign and Adam Schiff running for Senate and all that. Okay, great. That's how they, that's how they make their money. Now, let me make this finer point. If you and I and our audience learned that Judge Mershon used to be the general counsel of that company, and he gets a pension from that company, and or he gets a bonus from that company, that company, where he has a financial vested interest, I would be the first one to say that Judge Mershon should go. That, that the fact that he's taking dollars directly into his pocket, or indirectly or otherwise, through his daughter, and is being rewarded, and basically working on commission for every time he makes a ruling against Donald Trump, that company makes more money. Okay, 
he would have to go, right? But that's not what we have here. Judges are allowed to have family members. Family members are allowed to have jobs. And they're allowed to exercise the First Amendment rights, and it doesn't back up on the judge for removal. If that's all it took to remove a judge, we would have no judges presiding over any cases. And every defendant not named Trump would be trying this trick. That's not how it works. Judge, getting rid, judges are a stubborn thing. I'll just, I've been doing this for 33 years. Judges are a very stubborn thing. It's very hard to get rid of a judge. I've only tried it once in my career and it worked, but that was the only time I ever did it because I had the facts on my side of extrajudicial statements made outside the courtroom that showed that he was biased towards against my client. We happen to catch it. That's good. The other stuff that's listed in the motion for recusal, besides that Laura Mershon makes a living in politics, good for her, God love her, is, uh, oh, uh, the judge made a gave an interview. And I, and I, I like leaned in. I was like, okay, what did the interview say? Was it something about bias or that he, he's going to throw the book at Donald Trump? He can't, can't wait to get Donald Trump in his courtroom. What was it? And then you and I read it. And it's, he said, I'm going to apply, because <laughs> Rashad's a very uh, sober guy. I'm going to apply the law. I'm going to apply the law, the facts, the law to the facts. It's a very intense case. I'm like, that's it? That's the judicial bias that's being expressed in an interview? No. That doesn't work under New York law. I'll tell you that straight. And then it was, oh, and Lauren, Lauren, Lauren Mershon on a podcast, <laughs> back to our world, said something that indicates that, that the judge has been talking to her about the case. Well, what, what was it? Tell me. Lauren Mershon said her dad doesn't like that politicians use Twitter. And he finds it unsavory. Okay, first of all, he's, oh, it must be talking about me because I use Twitter and I do crazy things by social media. There's no social media at issue in this case. This is one of the rare cases involving Donald Trump where his social media tweets and postings don't matter except where he's violating gag orders. This was all done pre that. This had to do with Stormy Daniels and a cover up of a sex act payoff and how it was reflected in the books and records of the company, uh, as, which is a crime in New York. And then when you couple it with another crime that you want to do it to interfere with an election, you got two crimes and two crimes equal a felony. In New York. That's what this case is about. That's nothing to do. There's no tweet. The only tweets that are going to hang Donald Trump have nothing to do with being president. It's going to be when he made statements about this case in which he indicated that Michael Cohen wasn't doing official acts for him in a, some sort of presidential capacity or attorney client relationship, but that it indicates that Donald Trump knew about the cover-up and had instructed Michael Cohen to enter into the agreement with Stormy Daniels. That's the only set of tweets that are going to come into play. So when you're done reading the 35 pages of total and complete nonsense, all it's going to lead to is Mershon denying it. He's not going to certify the appeal. He's not going to stop the trial. They're going to have to try to run and try to get some emergency duty judge down there at the appellate division in Manhattan to give them an emergency stay of the trial. They've done it in a couple of times in the past for at least a day or two, but I don't see that happening here because this issue of Judge Mershon and the daughter, which has already been fully briefed already, and the Judicial Ethics Committee has already given an advisory opinion to the judge that told them, don't you go anywhere you're on this case and you're not biased and you don't have to be disqualified is going to die. This case, I want to hear your opinion. Sometimes we disagree on timing. This case starts on April the 15th with a jury pick. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think you're smoking the popaki and hopium there. Look, uh, we like to say here on Legal AF and on the Midas Touch Network, what we can do is the same way meteorologists try to predict all of the weather patterns to tell you, is it going to be a rainy or sunny day or whatever? We try to do the same here. That's every indication is that, you know, out of nowhere, could there be some emergency motion that gets filed? Then you get some, to your point, some uh, appellate judge who does something absolutely outrageous. And then that, you, you just, you never know. I, I don't expect or foresee that happening here, but, you know, I, I agree. I think this goes April 15th. Um, Justice Mershon has protected his record. He's done everything exemplary. And so I think that's a testament to Justice Mershon not taking the various bait that Donald Trump threw his way. I think it's also important to note that Susan Necklace, who's one of Donald Trump's lawyers, is not 
on these filings. It's always the Todd Blanche guy who's willing to kind of sacrifice his career and reputation for Trump while she keeps a distance. And it's frankly why I don't fault her for representing Donald Trump the way she does. I think people are entitled to have, you know, even Donald Trump, criminal defense lawyers who represent their interests. What is always problematic in the Trump world is where the criminal defense lawyers no longer act really as lawyers, but they act in a way of people who are really trying to tear apart our legal system and undermine our legal system and gaslight and then go on the press, you know, the press conferences and just lie all of the time. That, that's that's where my criticisms are focused on the Habas and the Blanches and Takapina when he was doing that, although he kind of had a change of heart and the Chris Kaisas and, and, and all of those lawyers. But Popak, here's the post. Here are the types of posts that Donald Trump was making in the past year. Um, again, these were these were these are recent posts. Just just take a look at this. To your point before, when you're like like people support this, like how do people like this guy? This is what Donald Trump said about this. He goes, "I did nothing wrong in the horse face case because he, he refers to Stormy Daniels, uh, the woman who he had sex with, as a horse face." He goes, "I did nothing wrong in the horse face case." I see she showed up in New York today trying to drum up some publicity for herself. I haven't seen or spoken to her since I took a picture with her on a golf course in full golf gear, including a hat close to 18 years ago. She knows nothing about me other than her con man lawyer, Avenatti, and convicted liar and felon jailbird. Michael Cohen may have schemed up, never had an affair with her, just another false acquisition by a sleaze bag witch hunt. Um, and here's the photo of Donald Trump with her right there. And he calls her a horse face. And I mean, again, the, just the, this the level of just this is where I go, guys, people, this is not Democrat Republic. The leader of the Republican Party is calling the porn star he had sex with for three seconds. Who, and she says he's got a small dick and and and, and he ca- and he calls and, and he calls her a horse face and says that he never had an affair with her and can't spell the word accusation and calls it acquisition i mean like what wh- wh- what like what like really like what are we talking about you know like we're the united states of america what what in the world what in the world is this anyway i digress i can do a whole show about that i guess i did i guess i created a whole network about but, that. by anyway. the way by the way i don't want to make promises i can't keep you know back on popaco popium but i have been contacted by a close business advisor of stormy about um having me do an interview with her before the trial i, I I'm, I'm in talks that's all like i'll leave it at that <laughs> popakian is in popakian negotiation <laughs> well there you go we don't blow smoke or sunshine on legal af we do it twice a week in audio, in audio and video versions, a video here on this YouTube channel for the Midas Touch Network, uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time, and then on audio podcast platforms of your choice. You want to know why we call it Legal AF? Join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays. You'll find out. We curate the best five stories at the intersection of law and politics, and we bring it to you just that way. On Saturdays, I do it with Ben Micellis. On Wednesdays, I do it with Karen Friedman Ignifolo. And then on hot takes, kind of like this one, about every hour at that same intersection of law and politics. So if you like what we're doing, take this clip. You could be like our marketing department. You know, we're, we're grassroots. Send it off to friends and family and people in your life and say, hey, you know that show Midas on the Midas Touch Network? I like Legal AF. Here's a clip. And maybe they'll join our audience for the longer, full podcast. But until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.